Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all doing well. My name's Amanda and I am a UK Stamping Up, independent Stamping Up demonstrator. There's my proof there, look. <laughs> and today I'm going to do some watercolour technique. Now, I am a newbie, so don't expect, you know, Van Gogh, although I don't think he did watercolours, did he? I think he was an oil painter. You know what I mean, it's not going in the Louvre. Um, more like in the loo. And... <laughs> I'm using this stamp set here which is Swan Lake and I'm trying to get a bit better at my colouring techniques and I love watercolour and I love messing about with inks and going just that little bit further than just stamping. Um, so I'm going to show you what I've done. Frustratingly, the brand new watercolour pencils are on back order so I'm going to use a different technique. You've probably all used it before. I'm going to just use the normal Stamping Up inks and this Aqua Painter because the Stamping Up inks are all water based so you can quite easily make watercolours out of them. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do it. Now I've chosen this is proper, it's the real McCoy <laughs> watercolour paper. Now I did buy this locally it, but Stamping Up do sell it, but I got this and I've had them in my stash for a long time and so I'm, that's why I'm using them. They are postcards, so all you'd have to do is put a stamp on there, write your little message and hey presto send it in the post. Or what you can do as an alternative is have a few ready and you know then just attach it to a card base when you come to want to use it. So without further ado let's get using our Swan Lake and I've got another sheet of watercolour paper here. I'm just going to move that out of the way but leave it where I can see it for a, so I can remember what I did. Now I did experiment with different inks. Okay I did try it with the Memento and then I did it with the stays on. Now in my experience using water with the Memento it did run. Okay it smudged. So I'm using stays on. Uh, it's more permanent. It's you can get it from Stampin' Up, so no problem. You've just got to uh, be just that bit more careful when you're stamping onto watercolour paper because it's textured slightly and whatever have you, it, you need. Sometimes it can be a little bit harder to stamp on. Oh, that might just be me. <laughs> just be me but I've been experimenting and I've been playing and the stays on doesn't run so that's what I'm using and anyway I like the smell of it it's gorgeous it's like um marzipan that's what it reminds me of so I've got the large flourish here well it's not a flourish it's flowers like a garland and I'm going to stamp it across the top I'm going to try not to get my head in stamp it across the central and across the top like so, and then give it a right good press because the stays on ink is not as juicy as the Stampin' Up! ones. I've got one prepared that I did earlier in case I make a mess of it. So, oh, that's gone on lovely. Look at that, beautiful. I have got quite a few layers of grid paper under here as well uh, to give me a little bit of extra cushion when I'm stamping. It just helps get the detail out. So, if you've got a stamping mat, try that as well. Whatever helps get a better, clearer image. Although, the Stamping Up stamps, one of the benefits and features of them, one of the features, <laughs> is that it has got this cushion layer here. So that's meant to, you know, increase your stamping experience. <laughs> it's meant to help you get a better, clearer image. All joking apart. And everybody that I come across that uses Stamping Up stamps will tell you they are the best. It's as simple as that. Right, so I'm giving that a right good press and maybe a little bit of a rock just to make sure I've got all of that detail. And there we go, nice clean image again. I'm happy with that. Woohoo! <laughs> so now I have my swan. I'm getting all inky. I've got my swan and I'm going to stamp her up. She's, it's obviously a her, I'm not being sexist. All the little baby duckies are there. Although they might follow the dad, I don't know. I might be totally wrong. Maybe the daddy swan is the most, uh, you know, responsible parent. I don't know. <laughs> I should learn to keep my mouth shut on such facts when I've no idea about the familial relations of swans. <laughs> 
I'm stopping this one in the middle. I don't know if it's a mummy or a dada, but I'm a... <coughs> there we go. It's very, very beautiful. Swans are just so elegant and so beautiful. Uh, I think the, the best collection of swans I saw was when I went to Windsor. And uh, there's a huge lake there and it's just full of swans and they're stunning. Right, so I'm also using this small lily pad, which is this one. I'm not using the big one with the rushes, although it's absolutely stunning. But my design only has room for that little one there. So I'm going to move that over there and try and get on with this. Try and be a bit quicker. And just try and stamp that there. I don't think that's quite in the right position. It's a little bit high up, but luckily I've got one I prepared earlier, so <laughs> not to worry. Right, now I need to use the little dragonfly, which is here. That should be a little bit lower, if you just look on this one here. It just wants to be between the, the garland. That's a little bit high up, but never mind. I did prepare another one, as I say so that I could put this to one side and leave it to dry so that I was starting to colour in a totally dry image all those stays on dries more or less immediately so I'm going to put my stays on away now don't forget to put the lid on because it will dry out because I do think it's sol yeah, the solvent based so I'm going to move that to one side and I'm going to bring in one that I did earlier that I stamped that bit more perfect <laughs> And I'm going to get a selection of my Stampin' Up markers. I have got the Many Marvellous markers, but you can buy them in smaller selections if you look in the catalogue. And I've also got my Aqua Painter. They come in packs of two. And they're just little brushes and you put water in there. So, what I'm going to use first of all is, I'm going to use, what's this one? Pull Parter. And I'm going to, I did use another one as well, that one, because I did, I'm going to bring that one in as well, is that Marina Mist? Yeah. So all I'm doing is, I'm just going to lightly colour, as I say I'm not an artist, but uh, we don't need to bet, and then I'm just going to go in with a slightly darker colour, which is Marina Mist. Just in a few spots. Like so. And then I'm going to get my blender pen. Uh, aqua paint, not blender pen. Now you don't, the trick is to not have it too wet. And then just lightly go over. And spread that ink about a bit. <laughs> Just spread it about a bit, that's the technical term for it. Spread it about and those two colours there, even though I am no great artist, they are beautifully merged with the Aqua Painter. I'm just going to go a little bit further up there as well. And you've got a lovely blended effect. Now if I can do it, so can you, because believe you and me, I am a great novice at many things. <laughs> now I'm using Daffodil Delight and I'm going to carefully colour her beacon. I'm calling her a girl again, I am sorry. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the reverse side of one of my blocks and I'm going to colour some of the Daffodil Delight on there like so and then I'm going to pick it up with my Aqua Painter. Dab it a little bit because I don't want it too dark, I want it nice and light and I'm just going to gently uh, just put a little bit of accent into the swan, just like a little bit of shading. And a little bit just on, a, on the ends of her feathers there, look. Just gives her a little bit of, so she's not totally flat. Uh, like the sun's just catching on her. On her feathers there, that looks really nice. I'm quite proud of that. <laughs> right. Um, so then I'm going to use this one, which is wild wasabi. I always want to do that in a like a Japanese accent. Wasabi. Because it's what you get with your... Um, isn't it what you get with your sushi? 
I don't know, I might, I might have got that mixed up. Sometimes I just make things up in my head and I think I've heard something and I'm wrong. So I don't profess to know anything about anything. I'm just colouring those in. These little dragon flares. You can play with all different colours, come up with whatever colour schemes you want. I'm just keeping it simple and just sticking to greens, blues and then a bit of pinks so that I don't get myself all in a dither, you know, because I'm no great artist but I can still have a try uh, and pretend that I'm a great artist. <laughs> There's a great saying that we... Uh, that I see round and about and it says fake it till you make it so just pretend you're a really good artist <laughs> and you will become one it's all about positive thinking right <laughs> and this is <laughs> blushing bride and I'm just going to do the flowers I'm colouring really quickly and I'm not too concerned to be honest whether it's perfect because it's kind of a cool effect if you're not absolutely perfect with things. Um, it just gives it a bit more realism, doesn't it? And also, uh, you know, I've got to get my skates on, haven't I? When I'm filming, or else they're long. <laughs> Although people don't seem to mind, I get really positive comments saying, you know, we don't mind, we know you waffle on a bit, and uh, we don't mind. So I'm going back to, is this pool party? Yes, I'm going back to pool party for the main, fo main focal flower, just to tie it back in with the water, really. You don't have to complicate it by using loads of colours and thinking, oh, I don't know if they go together. Just pick two or three colours and stick with those. Obviously, you can't have a blue swan, but you know what I mean. <laughs> well, you could if you wanted. You can, you can do what you want. And then I've got Pear Pizzazz, I believe, yeah, which is my favourite colour for doing like foliage and leaves. It's a really nice because it's not, it's a mossy kind of colour. It, it's nice, I just like it. Again, you know, uh, I might be a little bit out at lines. I'm not Tony Hart. Oh, I've just spotted my little doggy out of the corner of my eye. I hope he doesn't start barking. <laughs> oh, they have free run of the garden. And, uh, you know, I've said it before. Uh, I've got floor-to-ceiling glass doors out into the garden in my craft room. So they'll they'll hunt me down and they'll sit outside my little glass door. Well, my glass doors and yap until I basically go and play chuck the ball. It, they'll play throw the ball all day, non-stop. <laughs> they just love it. But I can't let them in the craft room. Is they too naughty? And they want to chew everything and, uh, you know, claim everything as their own in the way that dogs do. <laughs> the less said about that, the better. Now, I'm going to have to do some inking but I think that looks really really pretty you could just leave it like that actually it's really nice and bright but I am going to ink it just because I can't help myself I'm using mint macaron I've said it correctly and I'm just going to start and ink the edge of that I do have a card base pre-cut so I'm going to mount this one on a card but as I say, my original idea was that it was a postcard. I just think inking the edges, just it brings it in a bit and just makes it look kind of, I don't know how to explain it, almost like romanticised and, you know, soft. I just, I just like it. <laughs> I must say that on every video, you'd be sick of hearing me. You'd be going, oh, she's inking again, she's off. <laughs> Oh dear. Well, you can always switch over and go watch somebody, you know, opening Kinder Eggs or something like my child does. <gasps> How boring. <laughs> or Stampy Long Nose and his, and his Minecraft videos. Oh, drives me sick of hearing that man's voice. It's almost worse than mine. 
Right, so I'm going to leave that at that now. I better put that away. As I say, I have got a card base here. So I will mount this one on a card base. Let me move that ink mat, inky mat out of the way. And I believe that to fit my particular postcard here, it measures, because my postcard is six by four. So my card base is eight and a half by six. Is that gonna fit now? Have I made it too small? I have, I've made that too small, but never mind, it doesn't matter. I've made that just a tad too small because I've done it eight and a half by six, and really I should have done it eight and a half by six and a quarter. Never mind. <laughs> Scored in the middle at four and a quarter, and then you would mount your card like so. Doesn't matter. I'm going to mount it anyway. I don't know what we're thinking. I was thinking of my normal sizes, but this little particular postcard is that little bit larger. So, not to worry. Some dimensionals. Take those off. Could have just stuck it straight on with fast fuse, uh, I suppose. But, you know, I like to make life difficult for myself, <laughs> wherever possible. Oh dear. I'm a bit annoyed that I've uh, cut that card base wrong. Never mind, not to worry, I were doing really well. <laughs> I were doing so well. Never mind. Right, so, I'll put that on there like so. And we've got our card. So there you go. So, one design, two ways, postcard. Or a thank you card, birthday card, whatever you want it to be card. If you've stuck with me, you're a trooper. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Check it out. And check out my blog link below, which will go with this project. Thanks for watching. Bye.